What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and we are here at the Nerd Castle with another episode of Mountain Blade Warband. In the previous episode, we had finally come at peace. Yes, everything was nice and still, the snow was falling pleasantly, it was gathering on the ground. You know that silence that falls over whenever you get that first snowfall or that first fog of winter? That's exactly what had happened in Calradia. However, we don't like that, we want to blow that all away, so we need to get ourselves like a big fan, or maybe a big bad wolf, or somebody to huff and puff and make it all go away because we want war, destruction, death and doom. So, what we want to do in this episode is because we have peace going on, I think we should probably spend this time wisely and go around setting up profitable enterprises. Now, because we're no longer at war with Vagirs, I'm thinking that putting profitable enterprises within the kingdom of Vagirs is going to be my best plan for now. We've got loads and loads of money, and this is the time that we want to get in there nice and dirty deep, and we want to future proof. So, let's go to Rivetcheg, and we're going to talk to the Guildmaster. And hopefully, I hope this episode, we actually do declare war. We do have a Cassius Belli right now, or a Cassius Belli if you wanted to talk about Roman tummies. But anyways, we do have a Cassius Belli right now if we wanted to go to war with Swadia. Whether or not anything will happen because of that remains to be seen. I don't really know how well the AI takes advantage of Cassius Belli. Sometimes it seems like sort of a arbitrary thing, declaring war in this game. It never, one never follows the other. So exactly what I mean there, it's sometimes you just don't see things happen in the order you would assume them to. So let's go to the guild. Master, and no, we don't want a job. Forget your job. We are super rich and have no time for your employment. Let's buy land for a productive enterprise. Oh, that's right. The Lord doesn't like me. Okay, so we may have to do something a little bit more original here. Then maybe we'll go down and we will diddle with Rodox. That might be a good plan because I've got to run down there every now and again, anyways, simply to grab more crossbowmen for my mercenary troop. So I think maybe we'll do that instead. Saren and Sultanate in the Kingdom of Rodox have made peace. Unfortunate. That means they're probably about ready to go to war with anybody. If we go to war with Rodox, I'll probably be like, meh. I'll make a very unhappy noise, like the sound that a frog might make if it was really, really upset about losing its favorite fly. Just meh, ribbit. And so I'm going to go down to the Rodox territory. Hopefully we don't declare war with them anytime soon. I want to fight Swadia, like right now. I want to get Tear back and I want to get Vercheg. Those are the only two localities that I give the slightest, remotest damn about at the moment. I heard that that saying, so I don't give a damn, I heard that that saying is not so necessarily like I give, I don't give a D-A-M-N, like that spelling, but supposedly when you had British soldiers stationed in India, way back in the days of the British Empire, there was a coin there called a dam that didn't have like any value whatsoever, it was spelled like D-A-M-M -M or D-A-M or something like that, and that's where the phrase came from is that they would just say, I don't give a damn because it was worthless anyways. Now then, let's go to, maybe Veluca will allow us to put something in. In any case, we're going to try and ride around in Rodox for now, and possibly deposit our financial seed anywhere that it will allow us to. Ooh, it didn't deploy me with a horse. That means I've got to walk around ghetto mode. That sucks. Well then, I guess we'll be footing it for now. And the unfortunate side effect of that is that I don't really know my way around any of these Rodox villages, so hopefully we don't get lost and in a weird neighborhood where people with shaggy hairdos try and kill us. Nope, I don't see anything over here in between their Scooby Snacks and their giant ridiculous dogs. I had a friend when I was growing up that raised Great Danes. And a lot of people are like, yeah, I want a huge dog. For example, for me, it's a St. Bernard. Like, I can't die yet. In my current, like, real-life form, my corporeal form, I can't die yet because I haven't owned a St. Bernard. So were I to get in, like, a car accident tomorrow, I would hope that a shield of the St. Bernard would come around me and be like, nope, we can't take him yet. Or at least some angelic ledger would say, no, we can't take him yet because he hasn't had a St. Bernard. Like, for example, a lot of people want to have large dogs, but I will issue a word of warning here. Great Danes are really, really big. Let's see here. Will you allow me to do this? Given our... Oh, King Yeraglek doesn't like me either. We may need to let ourselves cool down a tad with Vagirs before I can do any of that. I had completely and totally forgotten that I thought it just checked with your kingdom reputation, but it also checks with the reputation of the lord who owns the palace, so there's also that to be considered. I may have to jump into some battles down here. How's our morale looking? 68? That's a really big group of bandits right there. 59 mountain bandits. Let's jump in on that fight simply because it's going to be a good morale boost before we continue our business down here in the south. Your time has run out, wretch. You will fall. I will drink from your skull! I feel like there should probably be a bit more enunciation at the end of that. Just random noises and shouting. Just... Like when you run out of things to say, you're now so angry and you're so filled with the rage of the battlefield you can no longer contemplate anything worth saying. That's where I like to think my troops are at right now, they're just drooling profusely out. Cavalry, what are you doing? Cavalry, what are you doing? Get back over here, they're like, well you didn't give us an order so we just decided to ride on in. 
You know, you can't leave us here in the dark. We need light. We need illumination. Jump over the heads of my troops right there. They get upset when you do that. They've lodged several complaints, but I don't listen. I still enjoy jumping my war charger over the top of them. Nizar has gotten himself knocked the hell out somehow right here in the early end of the battle. The skirmishing having begun, they do have javelins. So I'm going to send everybody in. One thing I didn't tell you guys, so in between episodes, I got bored. That's essentially what happened is I told you last episode that how I was going to spend my time is I was just going to hang out and wait for war to be declared because the game is sort of boring when you're not at war. Don't try and spear me. I'm not a whale. I'm not here to be harpooned at your leisure. I am here to strike you back. So how terrifying would that be, though, if whales had swords? I feel like they would have trouble wielding them, though, because whales don't have thumbs. As like any animal, I feel like most animals would have problems overthrowing us simply because they don't have thumbs. But those primates, you gotta watch out for them. But anyways, as I was saying, back to the original tangent before I got off on a second tangent, which was lying tangent to some other tangent. We have lots of tangents occurring. It's, it's nasty up in here. There's all kinds of trig occurring. Verbal trig. But as I was saying, I'm gonna slow right down here for a second. Take you to another area of this conversation that I'd already visited. Before this episode, I had gone out... And I had just kind of farmed bandits for a while, trying to keep our morale high enough and just making a little bit of money. And really, really hoping that war would be declared between us and Swadia. Unfortunately, it didn't happen, so I got bored and I started recording again, because that's what happens when I get bored. I start recording. And the unfortunate circumstance of that is that we aren't left with a whole lot of things to do in this episode. But, let's see here. I don't think there's anything else that I want in this entire thing. But having killed them off, let's continue our way on out to Yalen. And yeah, let's see if we can get a profitable enterprise going up in Nya. Let's take a walk around the streets. Hopefully we don't get robbed or otherwise assassinated. And Guildmaster for here. He's either going to be... There's like this little corral thing because they've decided... Their Guildmaster was just acting too animalistic, so they've decided to put him in a pen like a sheep or something. And he's either in there or he's at the top of the hill over here. So let me check this location first since it has a really nasty thigh-burning walk involved with it. Because lately, Mad Dog McGriddle has been hitting the gym a little bit too hard. So I'm trying to work her aerobic and also her musculature schedule, like her lower body skills. I'm trying to work it into the rest of her walk so that she doesn't have to spend so much time at the gym. And so maybe we can balance our pocketbook a little bit better. She hasn't been paying attention to the financial ledger as much as I would have liked her to lately, simply based on the fact that she's become a little bit of a gymaholic. She's just been kind of, you know... She's been taking all kinds of weird white powdery substances. She's been pouring them into drinks and saying that they're healthy. I don't know. I have no idea anymore. She's been flying off at a rage over the smallest things. Okay, so we can buy something here. Let's have a look at an oil press. So that's going to cost me money. We don't want to do the oil press. The tools for iron. God, this place is broke as a joke on a rope. Well, what about silk and dye? Can we do that? Oh, our weekly profit would be 600 dinars. Yeah, we'll take that one then. Let's go for that. So now that Yalen's been taken care of, we also want to jump out to Jelkala. So let's do that. And I think if I can get four or five of these set up before the next war, that really does a great job at insulating us. It applies the plumber's caulk to all of the nasty little rough edges that we might spring a financial leak. And so if we can get our caulking done now, I prefer to keep all the caulking where it belongs. The caulking outside of the battle. Because once people start caulking in battle, it's, it's unlikely that anything will remain sealed. Now then, the Guildmaster in this town, I don't know if he's going to be in the same spot. A lot of these places seem to be copy pasted but no, there he is right there. I know that with Mountain Blade Warband, they went through and they redesigned a lot of the towns so that they weren't copy pasted because in the original Mountain Blade, everything pretty much looked the same. Like, some of the villages based on region would be different, but largely, all of the buildings and all of the castles within any given location were pretty much the same. Let's do a productive enterprise here. Okay, so did I do something wrong here? Are you guys grumpy? Oh, they are. Okay. So let's go back to the streets, and we're going to do a quest for them in the hopes that they'll sign off on us getting a profitable enterprise here. Some troublesome banditos. It's only 170. There's only one group of troublesome banditos. So we'll jump in on that. I don't see them around. Sometimes Oh, there they are right there. We're going to jump them before they have a chance to run away. Surrender or die, sir. We're dealing in absolutes because I've been playing Star Wars The Old Republic again lately and only a Sith deals in absolutes. I start, I made a Jedi Consular and Tor is one of those games that I was there for launch. I used to be a really, really big MMO player to the point where it was sort of an addiction for me. I played 
a lot of MMOs. As in, I think I've beta tested every MMO of probably the last decade or so. Hey, sir, I'm trying to talk about MMOs right now and you're trying to ride me down. That's not alright. Whenever I'm trying to have a conversation, I feel like somebody tries to murder me in this game. A really weird happenstance. Although I guess not one that would be outside of the ordinary considering our job is that of basically a hired killer. So we've killed over a thousand people by the way, but as I was saying, Star Wars The Old Republic. So I resubscribed and I've been playing for a little bit and I made a consular because I was feeling diplomatic about the whole thing. My last couple characters, I have a Sith... What do I have? I have a Sith something. I have a Sith... Yeah, I know I have an agent. I have a max level agent. An Imperial agent that I really, really liked and I was kind of torn between wanting to do... The smuggler or the consular this time through, but I don't know. I'm having trouble motivating myself. I was trying to get excited about the Elder Scrolls Online, but I'm not really getting excited about that one either. I'm sort of wondering if I've just outgrown MMOs. It's just one of those things that I can't get excited about anymore. I feel as though MMOs are one of those things that really made up a large proportion of my high school years and also my early 20s, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just old and middle aged right now. Speaking of which, I'm going to give you a hint so that you can know when you're officially old. If you're ever wondering, when that point is where you'll look at yourself and be like, yep, I'm officially an old man. It's the moment you check for fiber content on the back of any box. I'll leave it right there. That is the cutoff point where you are officially old. I did it about two months ago and I was like, oh my god, I just checked a box for fiber content. That means that I'm spending a large proportion of my day just wondering if I'm going to be regular, which is not something that your normal young person just kind of worries about. And so at that point I was like, well, I'm officially the world's first 26-year-old, 50-year-old. I guess I'll go to bed now at 6 in the afternoon and then wake up at 5 in the morning to go work on my golf game. I don't know. But as I was saying, I think that maybe I might have outgrown MMOs. I'm remaining tentatively excited about The Elder Scrolls Online. Based on the gameplay I've seen so far and kind of the word of mouth I've heard from friends that are involved in it, I'm not so sure it's going to be amazing, but I think that's going to be the last MMO that I'm going to give a fighting chance before I just write off the genre forever. I felt like over the last 5 or 6 years that MMOs have shown no innovation whatsoever, and the few that have tried, like the ones that were actually different, like Tabula Rasa, just tanked obsessively terribly, so now we should be able to do a productive enterprise. Fantastic. We can make tools for minus 24, no, uh, that's terrible. We can also make no money, so you can pay us and you can make no money, and no, that's obviously not economical. Maybe we'll think about doing wine. Minus 14, no, that won't do it for us either. Well, then we'll go back for, oh, minus 1,000 almost for Velvet. This place might just be broke. That is the other possibility. We can make 84 dinars a week by bumping into our microphone. And it looks like nothing here is going to be incredibly profitable. Which means I'm not really super stoked. I'm not vibrating in my seat right now like wom 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 wom. Like I'm not creating like sine waves with my own vibration about the possibility of creating profitable enterprises here then. We could make a brewery. I think what I'd rather do here is I'll just wait and see if their... Yeah, I think I'm going to wait and see if their economy recovers. And it seems unremarkable. We could talk to somebody and figure out how they're doing, but at the moment it seems like it's just not a great place to be setting up businesses. So I'm going to avoid getting myself trapped in an endless spiral of brokeitude here for now, which is a word that I have created. I have handcrafted. I have wordsmithed it brokeitude to describe a situation in which you might find yourself broke now then let's head back on up to the north and we've got people to upgrade so let's do that you will notice that we have a lot of huscarls now we're up to 26 huscarls which is a terrifying retinue of huscarls that is enough access to absolutely fell any force and make any enemy that hides behind a shield tremble in their collective chainmail booties We've also got camp followers right here because as we were riding around, I managed to defeat a huge group of sea raiders. There was like 70 or 80 of them, and they had like 25 females. Just 25 of the female farmers just in their possession, I suppose. They were creating their own harem or something of that nature. And so I actually disbanded troops in order to have like five or six sword sisters. Could I get away with it? I would have. Or could I have gotten away with it, I guess would be the more syntactically correct way to say that. If there was a situation in which I could have made better on that particular proposal. I think I probably would have had King Ragnar wants us to go to Ismerala Castle. Okay, let's head on up there. We'll head to the first. We haven't gone to a feast in a really long time, so we should probably make FaceTime with the remainder of our kingdom, just in the interest of our future well-being that people will like us around here. But as I was saying, I was really sort of enamored with the idea of having an army of like 150 sword sisters just following me around. Just an army of Amazonian females, Mad Dog McGriddle and her 
crew of badass women with swords and things that penetrate you. Let's visit the tavern to see if I can get rid of some of these troops while we're here. That looks like somebody... What are you, a mercenary horseman? No, sir, we have no need of you. Step away from me, smelly man with beard. I have no desire to speak with you right now. Well then, let's head off to Tyr, and we shall see if there is a ransom broker that we might sell our people to. Wait, what in the hell? Are we at war? What? Hold on. Did war get declared without me knowing? Oh, it did. We're at war with Swadia. When did this happen? I totally missed that. Okay. So, battle plan has changed. Now we need to get in here and pick fights with anybody we can. Because this is the time that we really want to make positive headway against this faction. So let's start whacking lords here. And before they get too excited, I mean whacking you in the head, sir. So, you know, just let's keep this proper. Let's keep this civil. Because frankly, if this turns into a military matter, I feel as though you're probably going to regret the situation, seeing how badly I outnumber you. Let's set up on the hill here. While it's not a house on a hill, it is a proverbial garrison on a hill, which I suppose will work out okay in the absence of one and the other. Now that my troops are trapped within the confines of my own lines, I'm going to ride on out this way, and let's take a look about what they're fielding before we go any further. So it appears as though they have... Oh, that's my guy. I thought that was one of their troops just kind of errantly running towards us, and I was like, that is brave, but really, really ill-advised. That is a terrible, terrible idea. I cannot advise you to do so in good health. That would be something done in sort of a flu-ridden haze. Let's go ahead and tighten our formation for now. Oh my god, what have I done? I've lost my selection. Okay, let's go ahead and tighten our formation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my archers out and over to there, to the top of that hill. And then we'll take our infantry and we'll set them up over there. And I'm going to ride around on the left side. And we're going to see if we can't do the old baity-baity switchy-switchy. And if we can get them to charge us, it'll make this battle a little bit more simplistic. But if they decide to just hold up in a corner, obviously we're going to have to go to war with them. Which entails all of the punching and biting and kicking and squealing girly mode and kicking in the groin that we can handle right now. That's my secret battle tactic. The kick in the groin. hoo -ah! It seems to end battles pretty quickly. I mean, it doesn't make you any friends, but if it works, it's not stupid. It may be a wussy tactic, but you know, whatever. I I'm a wussy guy, so you got to do what you got to do. Self-depreciation mode. Go! Now then, it looks, honestly, that force right there is not one that's inspiring a whole lot of respect for me. I don't have enough horsemen at the moment, though, to charge that line. It is large enough to where my seven horsemen, I don't think, are going to be able to do anything. So let's go ahead and have the infantry charge. And we'll get them started off with a little bit of the old skirmishing. And once they have skirmished to their lovely hearts... What is going on over here? Okay, once they've skirmished to their hearts content... I'm going to put my archers on over there. We'll get them marching a little bit close. We want to get close to the enemy. We want to close enough to possibly hug them in the case that they lose this battle because I feel like they may need a little bit of psychiatric aid the moment this thing... Okay, now's the time. Let's go ahead and charge them. And that's going to create a little bit of a diversion for the archers while the remainder of my force hits them. How have two people died already? Did they horse charge me? That's not all right. I'm going to kill off that veteran right there. And I almost got lanced. And while some things do better when they're lanced, for example, InSync did much better when it was lanced, I conversely do not do well when lanced. When lanced, I tend to become very, very, oh, lethargic, I guess is the way that I would describe it. I start to sweat profusely. I'm definitely unhappy. I start taking aspirin, but that just makes the bleeding worse. And so I would prefer to keep myself unlanced at the moment. Let's go ahead and whack the remaining few enemies. We'll take whatever prisoners we can at the end of this battle. But I would prefer to wipe them out to the man. I don't want to have to do a second follow-up battle here if I can help it. I hate those little 3 versus 140 battles that they sometimes wrangle you with. Alright. And so down they go. That should be... Where is my remaining enemy here? There's somebody that's red that is not dead. Everybody's running off this direction, so I'm going to assume... Oh, never mind. They're just running just to run. They're getting their aerobics in. I know it's boring around camp, so you got to stretch your legs when you can. We lost two men, a veteran and a hired blade. Costly losses for a battle that probably shouldn't have had it. We're going to allow him to be free. So there it is. From here on out, I'm probably going to start releasing the majority of the lords unless we capture the king. The king is going to be the one exception to that because you get paid a lot of money for him. And I'm not adverse to making more and more cash as this whole thing plods along. Let me grab all of the goodies that I can. It looks like we're a little bit low on diversified food stocks at the moment. So in the interest of having a nice food portfolio, 
I like to keep my food in a portfolio, but it is a messy. Like sometimes there's a little bit of barbecue sauce or jam or something along the edges of the paper. The portfolio is definitely not an object that was designed in order to be used to hold your food, but you can make a shift with it if you have to. Now then, let's go ahead and invade the field here too. It's going to be 100 versus 90, so we want to play this one a little bit safer. We have a pretty good renown value vouching for us. And troops, what are you doing? Don't ride off into the distance right now. I think what I'd like to do is let's have a look-see. And if they're coming at me blazing saddle style. Or in a fashion that might chafe the legs. We'll try and hide on a hill. But if we don't have time to deploy to a hill, I guess we'll take a valley. Since you takes what you gets. Oh, hey now. It appears as though they are lining up along the back wall which is very very disappointing so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing we did last battle we're gonna have the infantry collapse a little bit and infantry is gonna charge since they're gonna force us into that corner anyways no that's not what I wanted I said archers some archers on the tower oh, okay there we go so the archers are now in a position that I can find agreeable rather than a position that I find argumentative, which is the worst type of position. If anybody's in an argumentative position right now, cease and desist, sir, because I'm not in the mood. Now then, I feel like there's been some kind of barometer shift. I've got like a weird headache going on right now, but it's fine because I'm still in a jovial mood. So that's perfectly cool, which is in between. That's kind of like when you've got Mila Jovovich in a vile mood. I don't know. I tried to do a bad joke right there, but it, it is what it is. It ended where it started. It looks like they do have a lot of sharpshooters, so something bad might occur to us right here when we march against the enemy at our own pace. I'm gonna start, yeah, that's exactly what I was hoping my cavalry would do. We need to break up some of these crossbow bolts while we're down and in here, and I'm hacking wildly. Which is a phrase that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because if you're hacking anything, to be honest, I don't think there's gonna be a civilized way for you to hack it or an organized way to hack something. Hacking does not appear to be a verb that's conducive with the organized modifier there. Oh, that guy's gonna shoot me. Yep, and I decided to risk the fact that it would hit my horse rather than doing anything else, so. God, there are a lot of crossbow bolts flying around. We are gonna take casualties. The unfortunate circumstance of fighting with Rodox. It's nearly impossible to make it out of a fight with Rodox without losing somebody. Just because those crossbows are deadly, regardless of the rank at which your units are functioning. They go straight on through that platesy mailsies. Which is what some of my more, let's see here, in touch with their feminine side troops like to call their plate mail. I don't know where they got it from. They just started doing it one day, and I don't really argue with them because I don't care. So long as they continue killing people in an efficient manner, they can call their plate mail whatever they want. They can call it Hal, they can call it Steve, they can call it Platesy Mailsies. Whatever makes them happy, makes them fight better, have a better morale. Alright, is this thing done and over with? Are we finished here? Indeed we are. So let's go ahead and quit the field. And look at our losses. We lost 10 men. Three Huskaros, some mercenary cavalry. Luckily, I think all of the losses that we're taking can be easily supplemented. Oh, good. We took another prisoner. Let's let him go. And I think all of the little things that we lost throughout the course of this battle, it may have seemed as though we took a lot of casualties, but I think a lot of those can be replaced by just kind of supplementary random mercenaries. So let's get on that. I'm going to head back to my own territory. Are we making money yet right now? I don't think any of the things that I've set up are functioning as of yet. It does take two weeks, I think, before things start working properly. Now then, I think we should probably take Vercheg first, since it seems like a lot of their lords are situated around the south in Tyr. What I'm going to do is let's look for a ransom broker in between here and the next episode. I'm going to look for some mercenaries as well to fill in my lines, and if I can find them, I think we'll be in an okay situation. To start messing around. Oh, there he is right there. Free ransom broker without any type of problem. Good. We didn't have to spend a lot of time looking for him. That makes me pleased as pie. So let's drop some of these bandits in here. Good. And so we've made all the money back that I think, anyways, that we spent on our profitable enterprise. I'm going to look for some mercenaries for the next coming battles because we are going to be doing keep sieges, which obviously we take a lot of damage whenever we do those. We have Mercenary Crossbowmen right there. I think they're already top tier within their upgrade chain, so I'm not going to go with that. We're going to take a look at some of the other capitals. I've got to go up to Ismarala anyways and see if I can find some of the other lords so that we can convene and take these other locations. 
and that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to talk to these guys in the next episode. We'll probably take Vercheg. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for another episode of Mountain Blade Warband. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, and take care out there, everybody.